And I think we're live. All right, we're just going to wait. Hi, happy Sunday. Welcome to Sunday Snapshots. We're just going to hang on here until we make sure we get a few people on before we start. Did the finger test like we always do. We have a few people coming today, so I want to give them a chance to uh, to get on. I should have music. I should figure out how, how to add music to this background. Sing. Oh, sing. Yeah. No. <laughs> Believe me, no one wants to hear that. Got anybody there yet? Three watching. Three watching. Okay. No one me. Say hi if you're here so I know who's here. And um, so we got Mary Lou. Hi, Janet. Hi, Stella. Okay, good. We got three. I'm not singing, Mary Lou. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> Ever. Ever. All right. Let's just wait a couple more seconds. I know I had six that were booked saying they were coming on. So we'll just give them a couple more seconds and then we'll start. Since it is 3.30. <laughs> Stop begging. It's not happening. Okay. Let's get going, and I'm sure that others will catch up. I'm sure it's a beautiful, sun, sunny Sunday, and you probably have better things to do. Anyways, uh, welcome back to Sunday Snapshot. This is Sharon Ings from Artings Creations, and I'm a Stapping Up demonstrator from Ontario, Canada. And today, we're going to do a little bit with um, stencils. Um, I just have to call my hubby back. Robert? Robert? Robert, can you fix this? It went wonky on me, so I can't see what's... Can you fix that? It went wonky, and I can't see what's happening. Okay, so... Um, well, I tried that, and it didn't work, but okay. All right, so we're going to... We're going to do a little... Hi, Anne-Marie. Thanks for coming. Glad to see you. Okay, you can't see me, but I can sort of see your comments, at least. Okay, so... Um, I haven't done a lot of uh, cards with stencils, not, mostly because I didn't have a lot of stencils. And nowadays, they don't even call some of what we're using stencils. They call them masks. So the same the same term, stencils or masks. And we'll be using some masks today. But I wanted to try it because I it is something that does make a beautiful background. And I haven't done a lot. So I thought, well, let's see what kind of things we can do with it. So let me just get this out of the way. And um, I just want to show you that the ones I'm using today are from the annual catalog. So they're actually um, back in the accessories part. And there's two uh, types in the annual catalog. They're called decorative masks is what they're called. There's one called basic patterns and one called plenty of patterns. And the plenty of patterns is what I'm using today. I hope I have that into the view here. Let me just get these comments out of the way. I do. Okay. And then the other thing that's kind of handy when you're doing stencils is the um, uh, sponge daubers. And, uh, but you don't have to use sponge daubers. There's lots of other ways to do it. And we're going to be using it a couple of different things today. But I just wanted to show you that they were available. Now, there are some um, of these decorative masks in the, uh, in the, the mini catalog that runs until uh, June as well. And it's on page 65 and they're, they've got butterflies and flowers in them. So they're a little bit, a little bit different. I don't have butterflies, but I wanted to show you this because it's kind of important because I'll show you how I improvise today. Okay. And just a reminder that the mini catalog runs till June, but celebration ends um, February 28th. So if there's something that you need, you should get in before February the 28th and you'll get your free item for $60 when you purchase $60 in, in product. Okay, so these are the masks that we're using today. Um, plenty of patterns masks. And there's four different styles. There, I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see there's this one, which to me, as soon as I saw it, it looked like a stained glass window. 
There's this one, which to me looked like mermaid's scales. Um, and this one, which is four different designs. We're going to be using those in a couple of different ways. And then this one, which I did not use today. This is one of the only the style that I didn't use today. But all of them make very, very nice backgrounds or even part of a background, as you'll see when we move along today. Okay, so I didn't make cards for every single one. I think I made, I think we're going to do three cards together. But the second one I didn't make a card with just because I didn't want this to run too long today. So a couple little hints when you're embossing. Now you can do any size paper that you want. Your, 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 um, this one, first one we're going to use is this stained glass one. Your mask can either fit your paper or your paper can be smaller, however you want it to work. Today we're going to work with it a little bit smaller. And a little hint is you don't want your paper to move. So just take a little piece of washi tape, painter's tape, whatever you have. I don't have any painter's tape, so I'm going to use washi tape. And that just holds your paper in place. So then you're going to put your mask down. I want to use the side that I use. However you want. When I looked at this, I thought, oh, it looks like little stained glass panels. So I'm going to do it that way. So I'm also going to tape down my mask as well. Just using a little bit of washi tape to do that. Because you don't want movement when you're doing any of this. So let's move that down just a little so it's not on my paper. There we go. A little piece over here. So the first one I did, as I said, I wanted to look like a stained glass window. So we're going to do three different colors. We're going to do um, polished pink, granny apple green, and Pacific Point. Doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'm using my blending brushes for this particular one. Let's just put these across the top. I don't know if you can see them or not, but so I have a blending brush that I've used with each color. Pinks, not necessarily that same color, but any pinks, any greens. I do wash them out in between, but I was working with them this morning and I didn't want to wash them out. So I just thought I'll just use the same, br same brush. And the background we're going to be using today is the Pacific Point. So I'm going to probably put a little bit more of the blue on than any of the other colors. So let's just start. And what I want to do is there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can make it ombre, which starts from a darker color and goes to light, all one color or even darker colors. You'll see in another one that we're going to do that it's going to be a little bit different. But this one, I wanted it to be in little sections. And although it's not going to be let me get a scrap that I can clean off on here and not mess up my thing here, although it's not going to be perfect squares, that's not the point, but we're going to choose an area. So I'm just going to choose this area for green. You can make this as dark or as light as you like. I want, for this purpose, want it to be a little bit brighter. So I want to try and make it a little darker. Try and finish some of these areas. Um, and if they bleed over into the other area, that's just fine. That's not a problem. Then move somewhere else. Let's see, maybe down here. And again, I just want this little kind of area for this and you're going to get some darker spots and that's fine too you want to do that normal round circular and rub off before you go on there just so you don't get them all get it big blobbed in one place but so i'm going to try and finish that one just did there and again i bleed it's bled over into here which is just fine okay that's what we're going to do with the green now let's try the pink. And you can make these areas that you're doing as small or as big as you like. Let's just put this off to the side here. Oh, let's do some in the middle. And then off to this corner. And blend that into that green there where you've done it before a little bit on this corner you see my paper sticking out there it's I'm not going to catch that but that's close enough that I don't really care anyways and let's just put a little bit up at the top here okay and then let's do our blue I'm actually going to close this up so I don't have any accidents this one too and then we're bringing our Pacific point point. 
and we're going to fill in those oops that's moving i don't want that to move i'm going to fill in those points that are left with the with the blue and i'm going fairly heavy on the color with the blue because i want to make sure it goes with my background again lending in towards those other colors mixing in with them and we'll do a little blue over here okay all right so that's what i want now my piece didn't stick tight underneath there so i should have had maybe a bigger piece of tape but we've got the effect we want anyway so that's good get these out of the way give that a little minute to dry Put these off Okay, and then when you remove your mask, and these can just be washed off with warm water or a baby wipe, whatever you're using. So you have a piece that looks, resembles a really pretty stained glass. So I did make a card with this once I finished it, but I wanted to keep it very, very simple. So all we've got is our Pacific Point. Let me just burnish that since I didn't do that when I put it together. And I'm just going to mount it right on here. I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose any of this background if I don't have to. Have to. And it's going to be a simple, plain card, but very pretty when we put finish what we're doing. And you want to see the background. So I didn't do a whole lot with this one. Let's just get that out about a quarter of an inch of a border all the way around. And all I did with this one was I um, used our new die cuts, the, the layered die cuts, and I, I did thank you, and I popped them up on that card. Very simple. Added a few embellishments, and I will show you the embellishments that I added. So this is the finished card. I kind of put them where they, the embellishments in the little corners, and these are our basic pearls that I colored with my... Uh, Knight of Navy blender pen and it actually was the right color of blue for the background so it worked out really well. So it's a very plain card but again it's highlighting that that die cut background and you could do this in any number of colors. So that's the first one and the emboss um, the dies the thank thank you was out of the amazing thanks dies which has become one of my favorite things because it's got that little silhouetted letters in it so okay so we'll pull that one aside so then my next one i used the ones that looked like fish scales to me because they really did they just really resembled fish scales so we're going to do the same thing i'm actually going to make sure i got enough to anchor this one really well don't want it to move this time it's getting a little unsticky that's part of the problem let's maybe get a new piece here just to be on the safe side okay that's better so we'll anchor this one down and we'll do the same thing we'll put our fish scales on there there isn't really there isn't a right and a wrong side to these but the one side to me looks a little flatter so i'm going to flip that over all right, let's take this down again. Again, I got I can go in with my tape because I got lots of spare space on both sides here. So, if you had um, a bigger piece of paper, you'd have to be a little bit more careful when you put when you put this tape on. But for me, with this, I cut my pieces to match the card size that I wanted. You would have to be maybe a little less careful if you um, cut them bigger and then cut them down afterwards. I just wanted to save time in putting things together so that we weren't spending a lot of time doing that today. So this one, what I want to do is, I, I still want to do three colors, and the three colors I'm going to use on this one are, um, again, the polished pink, balmy blue, and fresh freesia. And the reason I chose those colors were because, to me, that kind of, uh, led me to think um, 
Actually, I want to I want to do a bit of green in this one too, but I don't want granny apple green. I want a much lighter green. So let me see if I can steal this from another card that we did. Yes, pear pizzazz. Let's have a look. Let's let's remove the pink. Now let's try these three. To me, they it looks a little more mermaidy those three colors. If you, if there's such a word as mermaidy. Okay, I can still use some of my same brushes. I can still use my green. I'll clean it off really well. My blue, again, just go in and just make sure you clean off as good as you can by rubbing it off. And my purple, I think I will get another one for the purple just because I don't want to use, don't want to get a pink in there. I want the purple, so we'll get another one. All right, so this one we're going to do in variegated colors. And the trick that you want to remember when you're doing this, it doesn't matter which color you start with. You can start with the green, you can start with the blue, whichever color you want. But when you start, you're going to start at the bottom. Again, I'm going to make sure that this is cleaned off really good. We're going to start with the bottom. And I want this to be a little more, a little more subtle. So we'll start at the bottom and we'll go across. And I want my areas to be a little narrower. So now we're going to move on to the next color, which is the blue. However, I'm just going to show you here that this off here, make sure it's clean. Let's get this one out of the way for a minute. All right. That you don't want to start here and go up because what's going to happen is this is the darkest part because this is where you started. And this is the darkest part if you start your blue here. So this is going to get really kind of a muddy, not attractive color. So start a little higher than you want it to be so that your darker part is at the top in this particular instance, and then blend it down into that green. So you're going to get a much lighter color that goes together on um, where it blend, the two colors blend. So just with the darker part, start up there and then blend down into the green. And as I said, we want to do it a little more subtle this time, so I'm not keeping as much ink on that pad. And then we're going to do the same with the purple. So we're going to start on our, start a little above where we want it to be. Let's get some ink on there. So we're going to start up here. So that's where our darkest will be. It's not very dark, but we'll play with it a little more there. There we go a bit more color it is kind of a pinky purple and then we'll blend it down into our blue which gives that blue and blue and uh, purple blend a little little bit of lightness there which is nice okay we'll go back to our green do the same thing excuse my arms reaching across there again we'll start up here and then blend down into that purple. And that will give us another color on that blend as well. And then I think we're gonna get a chance to do a bit more blue here. So let's try the blue. And we'll start at the very top and blend down. And then you've got this subtle, subtle looking pattern. Okay, so we're done with the colors. I wanna get rid of those. But we're going to go another step with this one. So we're done with our stencil. We can take that off. And that's what we have. We have this. I don't know, I've got some little marks there that I don't like, but okay, that's fine. We're gonna, they're going to be hidden when we're done the card anyway. So, but again, that's just probably something I had on my hand. Okay, so we've got this blended kind of mermaidy tail look, which I really like. But to me, when I saw that, I decided that the mermaid's tail needs to be shiny because they are shiny. But before we do the shiny part, there's another little trick that you can do just to add a bit more dimension to it. And I just got pencils, three pencils. Um, this may not have been the right color. I might want to get a, I'll use this one for now. I probably could, just could have gotten a purple. And that is, I want to darken some. So scales normally are going to go down like this. You'll see when I show you the card, I turn them up the other way. But if you wanted just to give it a bit more depth, you can just take your pencil. Don't be neat. You don't need to be neat because we're going to blend it. And I'll show you that in a minute. 
And what you can just do is darken just the edges. And that gives that scale looking area a little bit more depth. And I did not do them all. Um, I kind of skipped over some. Uh, not a lot of pressure in where I'm putting the pencil on. Uh, maybe we'll just do some here. Because it doesn't need to be every one. It just, it just, you could do every one if you wanted, of course. That's perfectly fine, but you don't need to. And then on your green, the same thing. It's just better actually done with a, um, a not really sharp pencil. This one maybe needed to be a little bit darker green, but we'll do a few down here. Just want to do a few to show you the technique, actually. There and then our blue again down here. And then let me just see if this pink will work on the purple. I don't, I don't try a whole lot because I don't really think it will. Well, it will still give it a bit of depth. So we will do a little bit here just to show you what this looks like. We need a blender. A blender pen. Uh, let me see. Let me find my blender pens. Uh-oh. I lost my thing here. Hang on. I got to get my picture back on the other computer. There we go. Hi, Maria. Happy to see you. Uh, where are my blender pens? Every time I move this other thing to find what I'm looking for. There we go. Okay. Blender pen. So just take your blender pen. And just blend that. And it works kind of like a, almost like a watercolor. And it gives you just a little bit of depth in that. Let's call that a scale. Because that's kind of what it looks like to me. And I just really liked the effect. Especially when I was trying to make this look like a mermaid scale. Which was my plan. So as I say, you could do every one if you wanted to. Just clean it off in between colors so you're not traipsing that blue back up into the green part. The green didn't show. I should have had a darker green to go there. But And then here's where we added a little bit of the reddy pink color. I don't know if you can even see this dis dif difference. It's very subtle, actually. But it just gives, a, it's kind of like coloring, and it just gives a shade. I just wanted to show you that you could use your pencils. That's another option when you're, working with stencils is using your pencils. Let's do the blue. And again, I didn't clean that off. So now that one looks a little bit bluey green, but I don't even mind that. Okay. See, that's really bluey green there. Okay. So now what we're going to do to make this shiny, I am only going to do part of this one. And the reason for that is because I embossed it with my iridescent ice which is a stamping up product but it's an old stamping up product and I don't think they even in fact I'm sure they don't even carry this anymore um to get the effect which I'll show you on the card that I made but I don't have enough to do the whole card so basically the technique I used was I took my Versamark let's get my scrap paper here just so we're not making a mess I took my Versamark pad and just ran it completely over the whole thing. I'm only going to do the bottom half so I can show you. Hopefully this way you'll get to see the difference too. So just, I hope I'm in the screen I am. Just run that right over. And then, now you tell me what step I missed in embossing. Everybody should know what step I missed. We've done this often enough. I didn't use my buddy. So let's hope there's no no fingerprints on there and that I got it everywhere I want it. All right, so now I'm just going to put a little bit of this iridescent ice. As I say, I don't have a lot left. I love this stuff. I wish they hadn't discontinued, discontinued it at all so that they don't use it anymore. Get that out of the way for now. And then we're just going to Click that off so I don't have iridescent ice everywhere. And bear with me while I heat this. It's going to be a little noisy for a minute. You 
can heat it from underneath or you can heat it from on top. I find that if you heat it from underneath first a little bit, then the top pieces don't blow away as easy. And you can see it changing. And that just gives it a little bit more of a mermaid tail look to it, to me anyway. So you just, I don't know if I can show you that or not. I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference. Don't see, know if you can see the shiny side compared to that. But it's very, very pretty. Trust me. It's very, very pretty. And that's how I finished the whole piece. So then... To make a card and we're not going to make this card today i just wanted to show you the one i did and this is the one that i finished i don't have a mermaid stamp so that is not a stamping up stamp i actually that's a digi stamp that i actually have and i colored her scales very similar colors to the background and i actually put wink of stella on her scales and on her little tiara that's on the top and tried to use the colors that were in the back of the card one of the things i don't think you can see on here is the background ribbon is a piece of our fine uh what is that ribbon called maria what is this ribbon called um it's like a gauzy ribbon and then two strips of another type of ribbon behind it and then that one little spot that i had on here on this piece that i didn't like i could actually hide with the with the sentiment if i wanted to and i just added a sentiment to it popped it up and these sequins to me look perfect like little fish scales they were the perfect color and the perfect sparkle and shine that was to them so that's the card I made with that particular stencil and I was happy with how that turned out okay then moving along I wanted to try something a little bit different than I have done even ever before to be honest because I'm not I'm not uh, a slimline card fan I just they, they weren't something that really totally appeals to me but <laughs> Teddy, stop it. <coughs> Robert, can you get him out of here, please? <laughs> Sorry. Someone's walking their dog down the street. Someone as short as him walking by. Yes, and this is our guard dog, and he thinks he needs to let's, bark um, at anybody. Let's be quiet. Okay? So let's take him out, please. Okay, so I'm going to throw a slimline piece this time. And what I want to show you now is how you can isolate a stencil. So I decided, let me move this one out of the way, that I wanted to use just this centerpiece of this stencil. Um, and I, so I wanted to isolate just a section of it. So in this particular instance, this is where your little daubers come in handy. So you can, you can just do a smaller space and not, I also don't want this to move. So this one's not as important as the other ones were, but I am gonna just make sure that it stays in one spot. And for this one, I used my white craft ink. Just because I liked the look of it. Let me just get this out of here. Don't look at my pad. My craft ink pad looks terrible. I'm not sure why it looks so bad, but it does work, and that's the main thing. So I just daubed on here. Now I'm going to place this anywhere I want. And this is that funny little corner that I want off the card. Um, I want my first one to be off the card and I want to isolate just kind of this area. I'm going to get some other little pieces in there and that's okay too. And you can do a number of things. You can daub, you can roll. I find that this one doing what I wanted to get it where I wanted. I was a little bit better off just daubing. So when you lift that up, you get this kind of design and that's what I was looking for. So again, so now you've got a space that you can see you've done. And it's a pretty good guide of where you want to do the rest of them. And if you stay in that area, you're going to get only what you wanted to get. I thought it looked a little bit like a flamey flower, and that's why I wanted to do that one. So again, I don't have a whole lot of the background. I just have the little portion of the flower, if you want to call it that. And having that white ink there allowed me to stay in the same area. And it comes out looking quite gray, which I kind of liked that look. Actually, I don't want that stuck down because I want to be able to move it around. So let's put this one here. So I'm just going to daub. And then we'll do a whole one here. And 
I find with the stencils, I really don't want to hide a lot of what in the, is in the background when you make your card because it's so it's so pretty with what you've got on there. So let's just do another little, just a tiny corner up here. Yep. And then we'll do the same thing over here. And again, with these, you just wash them out in the sink with a nice damp cloth and you can get, or you can wipe them off with a baby wipe, which, whatever you've got. And maybe one down here as well. Let's just do a tiny bit of this one. And there we are. There's our finished background, which I'm liking how that looks. And that's all we need for the stenciling, and that's all we need our ink for. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to put that stencil up there. And so for this card, I took, and I've done a little bit of it already just to save some time. We're, we're going to do a bit of stamping with this one. So let's move this out of the way. And the set that I'm using for this one is our Flowing Flowers. This is a new one I just got. It's a distinctive stamp, and it's really, really pretty. So I'm going to do a bit of stamping here with this. So we need this one. We need this one. Actually, I'm going to switch this around. We're going to put this one on here. I'm going to put this one on here. And I also want I also want the little flowers here, the little individual flowers. So I'm going to take those. And then my happy birthday came from, I made this a birthday card, and my happy birthday came from uh, sweet ice cream. Just because I wanted a, it's a long card, we're going to have quite a space there, and I wanted a, a long sentiment that would uh, would look, I tried some other ones and they were too small, so I wanted one that give us a bit of size there for our sentiments. Okay, so let's just stamp, this is our background. So I've started the card. There's my slimline card. Now a slimline card, if you haven't made any, they come in a bunch of different sizes you can make them. This one is four by nine. So your piece is nine and then your width before you fold it is eight. And when you fold it in half, you have a four by a nine card. And what's gonna happen is that this is gonna mount onto here, which we probably could put that on right now and be done with that part before we start our stamping. Where's my tape? I did, leave, I did leave a good quarter inch border on these just because I wanted the background to show up a little bit. So I'm just eyeballing this. So let's hope, hope I can get it straight. Yep, pretty good. Okay, we'll set that aside and we'll start our stamping. Now I stamped these in with um, Memento ink and you'll see why. So I need two big flowers and I found it was easier to ink these stamps going this way. So I need two big ones. One. And these fit in, um, uh, the reason I chose this size is because these fit in a normal business envelope and that's why I chose to make that particular size. I may need another piece of paper here. I don't think I'm going to get all of these on this piece of paper, but we'll give it a shot. And this is our background one. So we'll put this one here. And then we need our little one. Oh, maybe I will get them on here. Just need a different piece for the For the sentiment. Okay, we're gonna have to do a bit of don't worry about those lines. We're gonna fussy cut anyway. So this particular set does not come with a die cut, or else we would have been able to die cut those, but it doesn't, so we're not going to. And I'm going to stamp on gray because I want to pick up that gray look in the background of there with my uh, pink, which was the polished pink, wherever it went. There we are. Gonna stamp our happy birthday. 
Okay, that looks good. And I will clean those out as we go along. All right, so now we've got all the pieces. Now, what I did with this one was, and I don't know if some of our veteran stampers that are here will remember these, is um, the Stampin' Up! St Stampin' Pastels. I still have them. They still make the pastels, but it's now in a smaller container, and you don't have as many colors. These are just as good as the day I got them, and I don't want to tell you how long ago that was. It was a very long time ago. But I want to add a little bit of color to these flowers, and I wanted a soft, soft look. And you could do watercolor pencil, you could do anything you liked, but I just wanted to do the pastels because it was quick and soft. And I just use your lovely little Q-tip here. So I picked a light pink color and just went over the flower. Don't worry about the edges because you're going to cut these out anyways. Just thought it added. I was trying to go for a monochromatic card, but I just, I don't know. I'm not good with the monochromatic thing. I like color. <laughs> so I found I ended up thinking, eh, it needs more. So I added a little bit of the color. I'm going to do all of the flowers in this pink. I'm kind of avoiding the center a little bit because I want to do the, sink, the center in a little different color. And even the little ones... I guess that's my not monochromatic. They're all the same color. That's the only way I could do it. Okay, we're going to flip it over. Now, I want a little bit of darker area, so I went to a darker pink. I can't remember which one I used. I think it was this one. And just went over the center just to get a little bit of variation in the color there. Again, just kind of avoiding that center. This one I just sort of stayed in this area. This one, I just give it a little circle. Okay, and then we want to do a bit of green on the two leaves that are there. So we'll just, just pick up a little bit of green. Again, not a lot of color, just a touch. All right. And just, you know, even just running your finger over those will make sure you got the excess off there as well. And then I want to put the tiny bit of yellow in the middle. Oops just to get the center looks a little yellow. And as I say, you could use you could use your watercolor pencils with your blender pen would do exactly the same thing. All right, so bear with me now while we do a little bit of fussy cutting. I might not even finish this one. I might just show you what my plan was. So let me cut this one. So you're not sitting here watching me fussy cut. I just basically wanted to show you how I had done it. So I fussy cut this one and I, I fussy cut them all. And then the placement that I did, so let me just show you the finished card. That's probably the best thing to do. Um, and then one of these that I fussy cut, cut is going to go on my envelope as well. So this is the finished card. And basically, I just put this one on flat. That was one of the fussy cut ones. This is the background piece. So this is the bigger piece. And I just laid a fussy cut one over top and I, I um, put dimensionals on it and popped it up a little bit so that it had some dimension there as well. And then my happy birthday, I just flagged each end and a little um, a little bow on there. Now for this one, I was, I'm just going to put a flat bow. Not, not a tied bow, just a flat little piece of pink. And you can use whatever color you had. And then the little dimensionals are, I got those from the dollar store years and years ago, and I'm still using them. But I really liked how it turned out and the kind of finish that it had because it was a little more monochromatic than, than what I usually do. So I hope that you like that too. Again, I've lost my other thing, so I can't even see if you guys are commenting because it's gone away. And my husband's not here. He's trying to keep the dog out of the room. So anyways, that's our third card. Now the fourth one, I got thinking, okay, so what if you don't have any masks? Is there anything that you can do without your mask? And I thought, well, you know what? I think there is. So this one, I'm going to use sponges. And you'll see why in a minute. I should have three sponges. Where's my other sponge? There it is. 
And I'm just going to pop up here and grab my, my small big, or my small die cut machine because we're going to need that. And I got thinking that why could a die cut not work as a stencil if I cut the die the piece out? So that's exactly what we're going to do today. So don't look at my little die cut. I it cracked. I must have put something in there on the wrong angle or something. And it cracked. All right, so now we need some pieces. I'm gonna put them inside, I believe. Hang on. So I've got, so I, as I said, I don't have any butterfly, butterfly masks, so I have butterfly dies. So I'm gonna make two masks out of these two butterflies. I have the pieces here. So we're gonna do the small one first. Um, unless I can get them both out of here, and I probably, probably can. Yes, let's do them both at the same time, and that'll save a little bit of time. So my bigger one and my smaller one. Oh, hello, Sharon. Let's... What did I do with the top piece? There it is. My thumbs today. All right. Try this again. And my smaller one. I hope I'm in here where you can see what I'm doing. Make sure we're on the... I could put some washi tape on there, but I don't really think I need to. I can keep it in place with my... I just want to make sure I get all the wing. Come on, don't... She's not cooperating with me here. All right, there we go. So by die cutting this, what we have created is two dies. Oh, that one didn't work. Let me do that one all the way through. Let's try that again. I didn't hear that second little click that I needed to tell me it had been all the way through. All right, so there's our second one. Get this out of the way. And we don't need our die cuts anymore. Or our dies, I mean, not our die cuts, but our dies. But we need these. So we're going to actually. Come on. Cooperate here. And I'm going to get my mat and my little. Thing that gets all the pieces out here. It's faster than normally. It's faster than trying to pick them out, but let's see. This did not cut through very well today, so I guess we'll use my pick tool. Get the rest of them out of there. Oh, for crying out, Christmas! Why did this not work? I might have to do this again. Yep. It's not going to cut for some reason. So let's do the big one again. I think I have lots of, piece, lots of pieces of spare people here. I'm wondering if that's got something to do with the um, fact that my one, my one uh, plate is cracked. I've got the other ones on order, but they're not here yet. Where's my big one? All right, let's do this big one again. Please fit on here. I don't want to go and find another piece of paper. Uh, no, it's not going to fit on here. Oh. In here, I thought it was extremely, extremely prepared today. Extremely not prepared. All right. Let's see if this one's wide enough. Yeah, it's better. Okay, back to square one. Let's try this again. I'm gonna go back and forth here a couple times just to make sure that that is cutting because it's a very it's a very detailed die, and if it doesn't cut properly, then you don't 
get everything out of there that you want to come out. So hopefully that worked better that time. Okay, so let's get rid of this again. few we got to poke out but for the most part we got them all and you're going to want to make sure that you've got them all because when you're using this as a die you don't want any holes still filled in okay so there's one and then there's your other one as a stencil I mean not a die okay get off there Hope you're still with me. I'm, I haven't lost you. <laughs> okay. Now we can move on. Let's clean up here a little bit so we know what we're doing. All right. Get rid of that for now. And clean off this. Pieces we don't want. Okay. So, stencil part. So, again, we're going to put our... Um, tape our piece down because we don't want it to move and where did my okay so here's my piece we're gonna tape this one down again I'm sorry if you're asking questions and I'm not answering but I cannot see your comments because I lost it on my other computer and short of screaming at my husband which you don't want me to do um, I have to work on my own here okay so we're going to use this as our die so we're going to place this and we don't I don't want this to be to do one off here. I don't want this to be perfect. Like I don't want I I want to go over the edge. So let's pick our colors again. So we want pear pizzazz. And I think I'm going to go with the purple and the blue. So we'll make this a little bit muted as well. So I do that's my blue sponge. That's my Pairs. Okay, so now we're going to start with the green. And I want a different look. So that's why I want a sponged kind of look this time instead of blending brushes. So when I start, I'm going to try and keep this green in the middle. And you're just, I'm actually going to, I don't want to rub hard enough to, to um, do any damage to what I'm using as a, stencil but I just want to make sure that I get the color down there all right so now let's try it and I should have opened them all first and I didn't so let's hope this doesn't move because you can't really go tape it down you kind of have to be ready to go all right there we go so that was our green so now let's do a bit of purple and I'm, I'm just holding this and as you can see I'm going over the edge and that's okay, because I want this look out here as well. Whoops. And you can put it back. If it moves, you actually can put it back. So it's not a terrible, terrible thing if it moves. Because I do want it over the edge. So then when you lift it up, this is what you've got, okay? So let's do another one going this way of the big one. Again, I can just do the outside first. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. paper whoops again as I said I like this because I can place it back where it's supposed to be if it does move get it in exactly the same spot okay Mm 
Okay, so now we want our green again. And we're going to hold the outside of the wings and just do the green. I think I used the wrong sponge, but I don't think it really matters. Just gives me a different color. All right, so there's our second one. Now let's do, we want this one to be blue, and this is supposed to be my blue sponge, so I'm just going to. And I want both my little ones in blue, so I'm just going to just do just blue for the little one. And then we'll put one over here. We'll tur turn it the other way. Oh, let me think about this. I think I want a little bit of the wing in the purple. So let's just put a little purple wing bit here. Though I don't mind having some space. I'm just going to do a little purple wing bit. Okay. And then we'll put another one down here. And that's how you use a die cut to make a background for a card. And your plus is now you have a really pretty cutout that you can use on your card, which is what I did when I made the card. So let me just get out of here. So basically, I used the background. Don't have as, as much green on here. I might, might have picked a different color background, but I put this directly on the back. Oh, get rid of that piece of tape. <laughs> nice ring. That's my husband. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to put this on here. And then I have some more pieces here somewhere. My background in green, so I wanted to reuse that green, but I just wanted to keep a little bit extra of that on there. And then I took my green sponge. Make sure this is, that's the blue one. You know what? The blue one might work. And I just wanted to give it a little bit of color around the edges so it wasn't so starkly white. So in this case, I'll use the blue. It won't, doesn't really matter. And then we're going to mount this on here. And we're going to mount this on the card. So far I haven't, um, on this one I didn't really pop anything up that much, but, okay, mount this. I'm moving it up to the top so I can leave room for my sentiment. So then this becomes our two butterflies that are going to be on the card. Give it a little dimension, we'll pop up the wings a little bit. Just going to put a little bit of glue down there. That's a bit too much. Let's get rid of some of that. Put this one here. And then I'll use some of this on there. And we'll put this one here. Again, I got too much glue. Okay. There's a paper towel. I just want to get rid of that glue off there. So I want to make sure those wings stay free. Okay. Then I have a little piece of our green, I think it's a grow green, grow, call it grow, gross green or something. And I just want a small piece. But what I wanted to show you with it, this ribbon was that it frays really nicely. So let me get rid of this. Use my big scissors for this. You just want to cut off a little bit of the white edging on each end. Not a whole lot, 
just don't know if you can see this or not, just a little bit. On both ends. And what will happen is you'll be able to fray this very nicely. These big gangly scissors I'm losing using here. Uh, bear with me here. Like, okay. So then if you start to fray this sideways, you'll see, I don't know if you can see this or not, but you'll see all these little white cross pieces. I don't know, can you see that? These little white cross pieces. So if you fray each side, then eventually you can just pull those little cross pieces out of there and you'll have a nice, a nice frayed end. And you can do that on both ends. You can't do too many at once or they won't come, but just if you do two or three, then they'll pop out of there. And if they don't, if you can't get them out, just pull your fray part apart a bit more and then you can do it. Okay, so then I wanted to mount this on here. So let's just put a little piece of double-sided tape. It's just about the right width for this piece of ribbon. So I know better than to try and do that with my fingers. Just doesn't work. Tool. I don't know. I'd be, I'd be lost without this tool. Okay, so then we're just going to place this down like this. And then I have, actually I don't think I've cut that out. I'm not going to do that part. I'm just going to show you what I did. And then I cut out my sentiment. So this was my finished card. And I have these, I got these from the dollar store um, many, many years ago. And I just cut a strip out and this, each one has a different color. So I, and I didn't mind. I just didn't mind the different color on the actual butterfly itself. So I put some only on the biggest one and then a few other as a bling on here. And even this one, I didn't pop it up. I put this on flat just because I liked the, the way the flat looked. So there's our four ways of doing a stencil. Let me just bring them all back in here again. Using your masks or your stencils. And there's this so my finished one here. And then our mermaid one, which is gone. I've lost my mermaid card. Uh, here she is. Okay. So I don't know if you can see all of them, but those are our four cards for today. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some different ways to use your stencils. Let's kind of move these around so we can get them all in a little bit at least. And even using a slimline card. I think I might actually do a few more slimline cards. Um, uh, I've seen some different ways to different folds to do some fun folds with the slimline card. And I'd like to do an eclipse uh, design with a slimline card because you've got more room to work with your letters. So it might be something that I might try next for next Sunday's snapshot. But let me know what you like. Um, what you want me to try and um, I hope to see you here again next Sunday it, when I send out the invitations if you could share that invitation that would be awesome and we might be able to get a few more people come to watch if you share them um, it will be again on video as soon as we're done here and then transferred over to um, YouTube either today or tomorrow but you'll be able to watch it both places again so thanks for joining me we'll see you again and have a great rest of your Sunday Bye for now.